My name is Otto Heinrich Frank. I was born in Frankfurt, Germany in 1889. I am currently 53 years old. Due to the circumstances of the war, my family and I went into hiding in July 1942 in the secret annex room. I was with my wife and my two daughters, Margot and Anne. I recall the time we spent in fear of the outside. Many of our thoughts, feelings, and ideas were recorded through a diary authored by Annalise Mary Frank. May her legacy reflect on those who had to suffer from war and conflict. Monday, September 1942. Mr. Dussel and I got into another battle yesterday. Yes, Mr. Dussel! According to him, nothing, I repeat, nothing is right about me. My appearance, my character, my manners. While he was going on at me, I thought, someday I'll give you such a smack that you'll fly right up into that ceiling. Why, isn't it that every grown-up thinks he knows the right way to bring up children? Particularly the grown-ups who have never had any. I keep wishing that Peter was a girl instead of a boy. Then I would have someone to talk to. Margo's a darling, but she takes everything too seriously. To pause for a moment on the subject of Mrs. Van Dan, I must tell you that her attempts to flirt with father are getting her nowhere. Pim, thank goodness, won't play. Good night, good night. Good night, good night Mr. Crawler. Crawler. We'll see you tomorrow. Please, Mr. Doozle, sit down. I'm dreaming. I know it. I can't believe my eyes. Mr. Frank, here. So you're not in Switzerland, then? Woman told me. She got to your house. The door was open. Everything was in ruins. The dishes were in the sink. There was also an address in the wastebasket. An address to Zurich. Father put that there so people would think that we were in Switzerland. And you've been here all this time? All this time, ever since July. Let's have a drink to welcome Mr. Dussel. Thanks. Didn't Mr. Crawler say you're not going to get much to eat? I mean, imagine it. Three ration books between the seven of us. Now eight. You don't realize what's going on. Every day in Amsterdam, hundreds of Jews are being deported. Come to the George Theater on such and such an hour. To bring only what they can bring in a rucksack. And if you refuse the call-up notice, then they come and drag you off to Menhausen. The death camp! People that you and I know, the Hallensteins, the Wessels. Didn't know things have gotten so much worse. Forgive me for speaking so. Do you know the D. Walls? What's become of them? Their daughter Jopie was in my class. Jopie is my best friend. They are gone. Gone? With all the others. Oh no, not Jopie! <laughs> there are some people called Wagner. They live near us. I think we should all put this off until later. I'm sure we have many questions to ask Mr. Dussel, but I'm sure he would like to get settled before supper. Thank you. I would. I brought very little with me. Unfortunately, we can't give you your own room here. I hope you won't be too uncomfortable. We've, we've had to make very strict rules here. A schedule of hours. We'll tell you after supper. And will you please lead Mr. Dussel to his room? Come with me, Mr. Dussel.
forgive me and I haven't expressed any gratitude to all of you. This has been such a shock to me. I'd always thought of myself as Dutch. I was born in Holland. My father and grandfather were, after all these years. If you excuse me. Yeah, and we'll be sharing this room together. I'm a man who's always lived alone. I've had not had time to adjust. So you have to bear with me. Well, let me help you. The news sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? It is, it's different when Mr. Crowley says it. Yeah. Mr. Crowley says things are improving. I see, I see. We have dinner at half past six. Don't mind. I like to lie down ten minutes before eating. I find it helps the digestion. That's fine, I see. I hope that I won't be such a bother to you. I've been getting up on everyone's nerves lately. I always get along with children because they know I get on well with them. So you don't have to worry about that. 